Hello everybody, welcome back to class. In this video, we're going to be talking about the inverse of a two by two matrix, specifically two by two. Uh, the process for finding the inverse of other matrices is a bit different, but in this particular lesson, we are focusing on a two by two matrix. So what are, what are our objectives? One, we're going to calculate the inverse of a two by two matrix, and secondly, talk about the relationship between a matrix and its inverse, especially as it comes to multiplication. First up, um, the inverse of a two by two matrix is used primarily in solving systems of linear equations. This is very, very important since we cannot divide matrices. Because we can't divide them, we have to get around that by using the inverse matrix to help solve our systems of linear equations, such as simultaneous equations, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, only square matrices have inverses, and not all square matrices have inverses either. So we're going to be talking about that. Only square matrices, but only some of them. All right, so let's um, talk about how we actually find the inverse of a two by two matrix using this particular method. And the first thing we need to do in finding the inverse of a two by two matrix is to find the determinant. Once we get the determinant, we can multiply one over that determinant times the adjoint matrix. The adjoint matrix, you remember, is to take this matrix, rearrange these two, and switch these two, change the sign of these two, rather. So we switch these two's position, A, A and D change positions, and the C and B change their signs. So first, let's find the inverse of this B. Now, B inverse, to find the B inverse, one, we find our determinant. So let's find the determinant of B. Determinant of B is going to be 3 times 4 minus negative 1 times 2, which gives us 12 minus negative 2, which gives us 14. That's 12 plus 2, so that gives us 14. Remember, um, minus, minus there, 12 minus a negative actually means 12 plus, so... We have 14. Once we have our determinant, then we are going to say 1 over that determinant. So B inverse now, 1 over determinant multiplied by the adjoint matrix. And the adjoint matrix is to take these two, switch them. So the 4 goes here, the 3 goes here, and we change the signs of these two. So this becomes negative 2, and this becomes positive 1. Negative 2 and positive 1. The negative 1 becomes a positive 1. Once we do that, we're finished. All we need to do now is to put that number inside the matrix. So we have 4 over 14. Negative 2 over 14. 1 over 14. And 3 over 14. So we get B inverse. B inverse is 4 over 14. Let's write that a little neater. Um, negative 2 over 14, 1 over 14, and 3 over 14. This is our answer for B inverse. So it's pretty straightforward. It's not difficult to do. Find the determinant, and once you find that determinant, it's 1 over determinant multiplied by the adjoint matrix, which is the rearranged matrix. Switch these two and change the sign of those. Let's continue. All right, so let's um, find some more, work out some more examples. So R, we need to find R inverse. So first we need to find the determinant of R. So determinant of R is to find the 2 times 0 minus 1 times negative 3 that gives us 2 that gives us 0 rather minus um, negative 3 which gives us 0 plus 3 so our determinant here is 3 and um, our inverse is going to be equal to 1 over 3 multiplied by switch these two so 0 goes there 2 goes here, change the sign of these two, so that becomes positive 3, that becomes negative 1. And so we have that R inverse 
is equal to 0 over 3, which is 0, 3 over 3 there, which is 1, negative 1 here over 3, and 2 times 1, that's 2 over 3. So you may simplify it, or you may leave it alone. This is the inverse matrix for R. Now for P, first we need to find the determinant of P. Determinant of P is 2 times 3 minus 1 times 6, which gives us 6 minus 6, which is 0. This is important. It means, therefore, that P is singular. P is a singular matrix. And so if we're going to find the determinant, we're going to write 1 over 0 multiplied by, switch these two, 2, 3, and negative 6, negative 1. Um, so this would be our answer. The problem is with, the, with this answer here is this. Because it's a singular matrix, we have to divide by 0. And because we have to divide by 0, we realize that it's not possible. Not possible at all. So for singular matrices, we can make a note here that singular matrices have no inverses because of this problem here. So let's note it. Singular matrices have no inverse. So we said earlier that inverses are only defined for square matrices, um, but this particular square matrix does not have an inverse because it is singular. So in general, in all cases, singular matrices have no inverses, no inverse at all for a singular matrix. Now let's look at what happens when we multiply a matrix by its inverse. So here we have B. B is the matrix that we used around here earlier. So let's save some time. 3, 2, negative 1, 4. And we are supposed to multiply that. So let's just skip and get the inverse from here because we had already calculated this inverse. So B inverse would be, um, would be 3, would be 4 over 14. Negative 2 over 14, 1 over 14, and 3 over 14. Let's just copy that and put it here because we're going to be using that same thing. So this will save us from having to work it all over again. So B inverse is this. Now we're going to do some calculations. Calculate B times B inverse and B inverse times B. Now what happens when we do that? So if we multiply B, which is... 3, 2, negative 1, 4, multiplied by um, its inverse, 4 over 14, negative 2 over 14, 1 over 14, and 3 over 14. We realize that we're going to go row by column again. So 3 times 4 here gives us 12. 2 times 1 gives us 2. So that's 12 plus 2, 14, over 14. Here, go by column, 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. Three, 2 times 3 gives us 6. So that's um, 6 minus 6 over 14. That gives us 0 over 14. We'll write them down in a moment. Negative 1 times 4 gives us negative 4. 4 times 1 gives us 4. All of that over 14. And negative 1 times negative 2 gives us a positive 2. 4 times 3, 12 over 14. So what we actually get here is 12 plus 2, 14 over 14, that's 1. Um, that's 0. That's 0. That's 1. This is called the identity matrix. It's a very, very important matrix. Um, it behaves the same way that 1 would behave in multiplication. So 1 times 10 would give you 10. 1 times anything gives you anything. This is the identity element under multiplication for two by two matrices. And it is very important when we are solving systems of linear equations. So know in your head from now that if you multiply a matrix by its inverse, this is what we're gonna get. But let's change the order and see if it matters. What if we change the order and say B inverse times B, will we get a different result since matrix multiplication is not commutative in general? 
So B inverse times B gives us 4 over 14, negative 2 over 14, 1 over 14, that's B inverse, and 3 over 14. And we're multiplying that by B. 3, 2, negative 1, 4. Let's do the multiplication. 4, 3 is 12. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives us plus 2. So we have that over 14. And 4, 2 is 8. 4 times 2, 8. And 2 times negative 2 times 4 gives us negative 8 over 14. See again, 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And 1 times 2 is 2. And 3 times 4 is 12 over 14. So we end up getting back, end, end up back getting the, the same result. Um, 12 plus 2 is 14. Over 14, that's um, 1. 8 minus 8 is 0. And 0 here and 1 there. So in this case, it doesn't matter if we change the order because we're multiplying the matrix by its own inverse. And so we get the same result in either case. Now remember, 1001 is a very special matrix. It's called the identity matrix. And this is the specific identity matrix for all two by two matrices. And it behaves like the number one in multiplication. This will help us later on when we're solving simultaneous equations and in doing inverse transformations where the inverse matrix becomes very useful. Now, for the last question, we're going to look at a question from CXE. Given the matrix R, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, show that R is non-singular first, find its inverse, and show that R times R inverse is equal to I, where I is the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. But we are supposed to show it, so we must do the working. So part one, we are going to show that R is non-singular. What does that mean again? Um, a singular matrix has zero for the determinant, so we must find the determinant of R. Determinant of R is 2 times 3 minus 1 times negative 1, which gives us 6 minus negative 1, which gives us 7. So the determinant of R is not equal to zero. And because of it's not equal to zero, it is non-singular. So there's that. And the inverse of R now, we simply put one over that determinant and multiply it by the adjoint matrix. So we have switching these two, three there, Two there, this becomes positive, this becomes negative. And almost done, we end up with 3 over 7, 1 over 7, negative 1 over 7, and 2 over 7. And this is what R inverse is. Last part, show that R multiplied by R inverse gives us the identity matrix. So all that we need to do here is to do the actual multiplication and ensure that we get the identity matrix. So R, the matrix R is, let's write that down, 2, negative 1, 1, 3, and the matrix R inverse is 3 over 7, 1 over 7, negative 1 over 7, and 2 over 7. Let's multiply that out. 2 times 3 gives us 6. And one, negative 1 times negative 1 gives us positive 1 over 7. 2 times 1 gives us 2. And one time, negative 1 times 2 gives us negative 2 over 7 as well. 1 times 3 here gives us 3. And 3 times minus 1 gives us a minus 3. That's over 7 as well. And 1 times 1 is 1. Plus 3 times 2 here gives us 6. So you can see that we actually get 1, 0, 0, 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 over 7 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. And 0 divided by 
seven is zero, same thing here and here. So we end up with um, our answer, this is equal to I. And so we see from this uh, demonstration again, that R multiplied by R inverse is equal to I, which would be the same thing as R inverse times R. So remember, to find the inverse of a matrix, what we need to do first is that we find that term, the determinant and then multiply that determinant, one over the, de the determinant times the adjoint matrix. Once you do that, you get your, um, your inverse matrix. It's very simple to find. In some cases, you can simplify. In most cases, you just, you just leave it exactly the way it is. For more advanced work, there is this nice is issue of reduced row echelon that you can use to find inverses for other systems that are bigger than two by two, but for two by two systems, which CXC deals with exclusively, this is how it's done. This is how you find the inverse of a matrix and the inverse of a matrix times, it's in, times the, the actual matrix is always equal to one zero zero one for all two by two matrices. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, continue to work hard.